Hey everyone, welcome to Wildlife Inspired. I'm your host, Scott Keys. Today we're gonna to talk about tripods and monopods. What to look for when purchasing one for wildlife photography right after this. So as we approach the holiday season, I know some of you guys are gonna have monopods on your wish list or tripods on your wish list for gifts. So I thought, let me do a quick video, explain some of the features and what you might wanna look for when purchasing one, especially for wildlife. Your needs as a wildlife photographer are going to be different than those of a, a landscape photographer or even a macro photographer. I'm gonna start with the monopod because essentially the tripods are gonna have the same construction as a monopod or the same different types of construction as a monopod. And in fact, this Robus monopod looks absolutely identical to their tripod. So the legs on this tripod are identical to the monopod. And the only thing that's different is just the heads that each one uses. So obviously the monopod has one leg and the construction on these, whether it's a tripod or monopod, is basically two different materials. You're either gonna get carbon fiber, which is a little bit lighter weight and has a good uh, ratio of weight and stability holding to the weight of the actual product. So carbon fiber is a little bit more expensive, but you will find most of the higher end monopods and tripods use carbon fiber. If weight is a con isn't a consideration and you want to save money, you can use aluminum construction. Not a whole lot of downsides to aluminum other than it's um, a little bit heavier. In terms of height, I like to have a monopod that is at least as tall as my chin. And keep in mind, you're going to have a head on here and your camera will sit up there. If you use the Wimberly Sidekick on a monopod, keep in mind that that one does not have any height. It simply comes straight out. I'll show you a picture of what that looks like so you can see what I'm talking about. If you're using the Wimberly side mount, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your monopod might be a little bit taller. So in this case, my monopod is just about as tall as my eyes. And that helps me when I'm using that Wimberly sidekick, which I like. So I wanna make sure that I've got a monopod that's just about eye level, at least. I wanna make sure the construction is the right, what's right for me. So if I can afford a little bit more money, I'll go with carbon fiber. If money's a consideration, maybe aluminum is a better option. And then the only other factors that I wanna show you is these lockout mechanisms. On this Robus monopod, it's a quarter turn to lock it out, which is very convenient. Haven't had any problems with the locks on this particular monopod. And I also own a Faisal monopod. Uh, both brands that I use for both monopods and tripods are Faisal and Robus. I'm not saying those are the only brands to consider, but those are the ones you're going to see in this video. But regardless of what the brand is, the features that you're looking for are going to be the same. So we're looking at carbon fiber. If you can afford it, we're going to want one that's pretty much as tall as our eyeball. And then on the bottom, I just want to make a couple of points down here. Uh, this little foot, this is interchangeable. Most wildlife photographers are going to use a rubberized foot. That's kind of the standard. Uh, make sure it's got a 3 8 thread. 3 8 is the kind of the universal standard for this. If it doesn't have a 3 8 thread, it might limit you if you ever want to replace this. For example, my Faisal monopod does not have a 3 8 head. So when I want to replace that, I either have to adapt it or go to Faisal and get their own uh, proprietary thread for that. I want to show you one other thing. Uh, there's a couple of features here that you can get as adapters or options to add onto monopods. This is a small uh, support system that goes at the bottom. For wildlife photographers, this isn't something I would invest money in. It's got a lot of nooks and crannies. You're gonna be in the mud sometimes. It's gonna get all caked up. If you were a sports photographer shooting on like AstroTurf fields or groomed fields or indoors, uh, this could be something to look at. But for a wildlife photographer, I don't see a huge benefit other than it just adds weight and it's probably gonna get gunked up. So while I own this, I I tried it and I didn't really like it. So not a whole lot of other accessories for this. One other note at the top, most of these monopods will, will be shown with a 3 8 thread. There are two standard sizes for the gimbals that will attach to this or the heads that will attach to this. 3 8 is one thread size. And then there's another thread size called a quarter. You might also see it say a quarter 20. That's just the coarseness of the threads. Don't panic if you've got the wrong one. Almost all of these, and you'll wanna just make sure on the one you buy, are reversible. So hopefully this isn't gonna make too much noise as I unthread that. But you see that little piece right there, put it up there. So it's got quarter on one side, three eighths on the other. So all I have to do is turn it upside down and thread it back in to get from a quarter to three eighths. So don't worry about it, but you will wanna check your monopod and make sure as you're purchasing that if you're using a quarter inch head, that it's got that uh, reversible 
thread size on the top. So as far as monopods go, that's the basic considerations. Yes, there's a grip here. Some are a little bit more comfortable. Some may not as be. I don't find that to be a huge selling feature. What I'm looking for in a monopod is do I have the right height? I will tell you uh, as far as the number of sections go, and I'll refer to this when I get to tripods as well. To me, fewer sections is better. What that means is as you get each section goes down, it tapers. So this is a four section monopod. If it was a five section monopod, this last leg would be thinner. And I even have one that's six sections. And so that last leg is really, really thin. And it's got more of these, um, these lockouts, these twist locks. What I find is as you build more and that material gets thinner with more lockouts, it's much more flexible. So while this Robus is pretty sturdy here, if this was a six section tripod, it would have a lot more flex and give to it. It's not what you want as a wildlife photographer, so I would encourage you to look at probably four section monopods. Unless you're extremely tall, you may need a five section monopod. The advantage of the more legs and why people actually do prefer some, that sometimes is that they collapse into a folder, into a smaller um, column. So obviously the more sections you have, each section is smaller. So when you collapse it, it can be much shorter. So check that out if that's a consideration. But for me, honestly, that's almost no consideration. I don't travel a ton and when I do, it's mostly in my car. So I'm not worried about these ultra compact situations. So that's kind of what I'm looking at for monopods. Is it tall enough? Are the thread sizes appropriate? Is the construction good? And then I look at reliability. I just look at reviews and ratings and make sure that it can support it. I do like uh, a monopod that can support at least 40 pounds. So most of the time you'll see these rated between like 30 and 60 pounds. Um, 40 and above just gives me a, a mindset that the company is rating it to hold my gear plus a little bit extra. All right, so that's monopods. Now remember, those, a lot of those same principles are going to carry over to tripods. I'm going to talk about those real quickly, but let's start with those leg lengths. You're going to see tripods that come in three, four, five sections is typical. I like three section tripods. And I like that for the same reasons I like fewer sections in the monopod. I think it's a little more stable, but what you are going to give up is height. These are both three section tripods. So I want you to notice this one is actually set to the highest possible setting. And that's at 58 inches. And when my gimbal's on there, it gets me up to about 63, 64 inches. I put my camera on there. I'm six feet tall. My eyes are probably around 68 inches off the ground. That camera is actually taller than me. So I can lower this down. I've got a couple inches of play. And I am going to talk about why sometimes you might want a, tall, a tripod that is taller than you. But for me, if I can get around 58 inches, I'm six foot tall, I'm fine. This one down here is a little bit different. I'm going to show you some of the options on these tripods that you can have. So this is the Robus tripod. You'll notice I have this without a center column. And on this one, I've got a center column. Now you will see tripods with center columns sold. The advantage is it's going to give you a little bit extra height if you need it. So if you're out in the field and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, I need it to be a little bit taller you've got something that's flexible enough to do that. The disadvantage is, if, especially if the base of this is low and a lot of the height is coming from this column, the column will never be as sturdy. So it's always gonna have more play than the base itself. Just think about a tower versus a triangle. The top of that triangle is gonna be very, very secure. A tower that's built straight up is always gonna have more flex in it. So this, this pyramid structure, this triangle structure is much more stable as you increase these extensions, it's going to be a little bit less stable. As a wildlife photographer, I don't, I don't like this. So I'm showing it to you. Uh, the one nice thing about this Robus and many of them, and one of the selling features you may want to look for if you're looking for adaptability is, can you change this, uh, this top plate? So I'm going to give me a second. I'm going to loosen this up. It's just a quick adjustment here. This has a little pin and you could actually see this whole center column can be removed. So again, if you want the versatility, it's a, it's a nice option to have. So you can see if this has a, a replaceable or adjustment uh, right here at the top plate. I've used this Faisal for five or six years. I've never changed that, that top plate. However, there's a couple things to consider. In the past, as a wildlife photographer, I wasn't doing a lot of video. 
Now that I have two tripods, I actually have this one set up a little bit differently. So this is a bowl and I'm going to drop this in. I'm going to drop the bowl in. And then this is going to fit into the bowl and this is called a leveling plate. And I'm going to thread this in. Now, why would we need a leveling plate here? If you're doing video, being, uh, finding a, an even horizon is very, very, very important. It's, it's a little less important, honestly, in photography because you can change, um, you can kind of change your lens collar and rotate your lens collar a little bit here and there. And you're often not shooting fluid scenes that go through. But in video, remember, you're going to be panning a lot. And if your horizon's off, your panning gets off. And if it's tilted down, it'll bend up and down. So you really do need, for video, you do need a very um, balanced. And so this little leveling plate allows you to level it and tighten it up. So when I'm doing video, I love the leveling plate. It's really, really helpful. It, it keeps me from having to move the legs all around. So with this Robus tripod, I have the ability to take and put these different heads into the tripod itself or change these bases around. I find that really, really, really helpful. Um, so I showed you the extension and I showed you this. And then the other one that the other plate uh, uh, for this one is just a flat plate. And the last thing I wanted to show you was just how these adjust. Now, notice I, I talked about this leveling plate. Let me turn this so you can see it. Notice when I'm using this style leveling plate, it's got this little knob at the bottom. When I have that knob on there, I can no longer make this flat. I'll talk about the importance of that because I do a lot of low angle photography. I wanna make sure that if I'm, if I'm thinking that I'm gonna be doing low angle photography, I don't use this leveling base. I'll actually use this tripod. So most of the time, I do not have the, the leveling base in. If I'm doing video, if I know I'm committing to video, then I will usually put this leveling base in or take this tripod. So I'm fortunate to have two setups that I can keep one with the leveling base and one without. But if you didn't, you could just change the plate out. And, then, and again, the reason is because if this leveling base is in, I can't flatten this out. And to that point, the, the adjustment for these legs to flatten it out or to change the angle is simply to pull this out and on the Robus, this stays out. So some of these will snap back in. In this case, it pulls out and stays out. I make the adjustment and then I have to push it back in with my thumb. I like a tripod that can almost flatten out. So I'm gonna show you some key specs that I look for in just a second, but I wanna get this as low as possible. Depending on this last notch, it may only come down five or six inches off the ground, it may come down three or four inches off the ground. And that can make a big difference to me. So I'll talk about that in a minute. On this one, the adjustment is a little bit different in that it's, it's like spring loaded. So as I pull it down, it automatically returns and locks out. So this one is, is like spring loaded. You can see it there and there it's locked out. And in this one, I'm pulling it out, making the adjustment and then pushing it back in. Personal preference, I don't, little, little tiny details like that to me aren't a big deal. So I don't really have a preference to either system, but I have read reviews and I've, I've talked to some people that have a preference. They, they strongly like one style or the other. To me, uh, not a big deal. Now let's talk about just specs. What am I looking for when I see the spec sheet on a tripod? Now, height, I'm looking at a, a, a tripod for me has to be at least 58 inches. I'm six feet tall. If you're shorter, obviously you can get away with a shorter one. Now here's the danger. I told you this one's plenty tall for me, but I've got this fully extended. Now what happens if I need it to be this tall and I'm shooting on a hill? And think about that. The back legs to me are going to be plenty tall, but that front leg that's going downhill needs to be longer because it's going to, it's going to have to find ground down there. And that's why a lot of landscape photographers or people who are working in, in environments that are changing a lot, they may opt for a tripod that's actually taller than themselves. So while this is 58 inches, you'll see tripods out there that are 70 plus inches and there's some that are even 80 inches and plus. So they can be very, very, very tall. Uh, it's gonna add to the price, obviously, and you may not ever need it to be that tall. So it will likely also add another leg. So where I like these three sections uh, to get taller than this. Generally, you're getting into a fourth section. Nothing wrong with that. Again, my, my theory is as it tapers down, the thinner the leg at the bottom and the more uh, sections you have, there's gonna be a little bit more play in each leg. So I, I like fewer sections. 
Again, the advantage with more sections is it will collapse into a smaller area. So if you are traveling, especially if you're going to carry it on, you're going to want to make sure that it collapses into a size that's good for your carry-on. So from a specs perspective, I'm looking for it to be at least 58 to 60 inches for me. If you're shorter, you may not need to be that tall, but if you are shooting in a variety of landscapes and you're, you ever think you're going to be shooting on a hill, you're going to, you're going to possibly want it to be even longer. Uh, weight, I like one that holds 40 or 50 pounds minimum. 50 and plus, it sounds better to me. So that's uh, some of that. Some of these companies, I don't want to say they fudge their numbers, but I don't know where they're getting exact numbers. To me, when a company says 50 to 60 pounds, I feel pretty good about it though. So you're going to want to look at uh, a reputable company. But yeah, I look around 50 pounds for a weight load or a load capacity. When it comes to minimum height, I try to get one that's about four inches minimum height. So when I flatten it out, I'm looking at four inches. And for total weight, this tripod is four pounds, pretty light. This one is five pounds. Uh, five pounds or less sounds pretty good to me. I've never had, I've never felt like this five pound tripod was too heavy. But if you start getting to six and seven pounds from a four pound tripod, that's, that's a little bit of weight. So you're gonna, again, depends on what you're, what you're doing. If you're hiking a lot, weight might matter more. If you're simply opening it up and putting it into a parking lot, you're not going to hike with it. Weight really isn't that much of a consideration. You might even want to look at aluminum because it may, it may offer you the same structural benefits um, and be a little bit cheaper. So those are kind of the specs that I look at. I'll put a recap up here at the top just to show you some of the key features that I look at when I'm looking at uh, either a monopod or a tripod. And in my next video, I'm actually going to tell you the difference between shooting styles why I opt to shoot off a monopod right out in the field. And I'll show you some specific examples. So stay tuned for that video. I'll put a card up here once it's released. A couple things when trying to narrow down your selections, because it can be really difficult to figure out what the exact product you want. If you're looking at monopods, I do have a video out there that covers a lot of monopods. I'll put a card up here. So reference that if you're looking for monopods. If you're looking at tripods, while I haven't done a thorough tripod review, I will tell you sometimes it's easier to filter things down. So you can go to the B&H website and you can type in the load capacity, the number of leg sections that you want. You could uh, narrow it down by the height and that'll get you pared down to really what you're looking for. Then there's going to be a couple decisions to make about, you know, do you need the bowl and the leveling bases? Do you need an extension? And do you want to find a tripod that will have those features for you? So something to think about, but I always love B&H's ability just to sort those products for me and narrow the list. So you may find that helpful as well. So let me know down in the comments, did you find this video helpful? Would you like me to do a couple more of these? And as always, thanks for your support. And I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.